We'd like to welcome everyone here today. It's uh, Scott Johnson and myself here to, uh, right now, and we're going to be talking today about uh, the four uh, ways to make your chamber irresistible to business. And if you don't feel like you can be, let me tell you, you can. Now, I'm going to start by uh, sharing my screen with you so you'll be able to see this presentation. It'll be back and forth between Scott and I for the first little bit, and we're going to be talking about these things. First thing I wanted to let you know is this is all about how you can build your chamber program into a relevant and engaging chamber program for years to come, and it will help your business grow. We have seen this in other areas in chambers especially though i have done a lot with chambers over the years and love to work with chambers so let me uh, go in and get started with this the first thing i wanted to tell you about is here's the four things that we're going to talk about that will help make your chamber business irresistible to the regular businesses this was in our promotion as well. It's all about moving your membership investment to a monthly. It'll help you grow, uh, you know, well, help you make more money and have a greater cash flow. I have several clients who are doing this and it has helped them increase the, the number of memberships greatly. Now, others I have had that it's only done a couple or three, but they've only just got started. The second thing we're going to be discussing today will be our, my three-stage buy local program that I have been using uh, with uh, both, uh, well, all kinds of people, and I'll get into that a little later. The third thing will be to talk about a training program and how to build a training program that will, one, satisfy the city's idea of having a training program to help train businesses of how to be good businesses that will stay in business for years to come. And it's interesting to note that most chambers either don't do this or aren't doing a very good job at it. In fact, I went on to 20 different sites today to find an example of this other than uh, the two that I work with. And I don't want to always be using them. And I couldn't find any. They sometimes have little things and I'll, we'll talk about that when we get to that. Then the fourth one, I'm going to surprise you with it. And so when we get to the end, you're going to get that information about that. Now, this is what you're going to, uh, what this webinar is all about. You're going to learn how to keep your chamber members and get more of them that's going to love being part of the chamber. This is a, a strong program that I know works. And then who should you partner with and why? We're going to talk about that. Getting government buy-in on your buy local program and training programs. And getting and even the fourth one we're going to talk about. Some of your potential partners, who they could be. Uh, the stages of a successful buy local program. I'm not going to just say, hey, this is just it. Uh, you're going to get the stages. How to brand these programs to you and your partners. Keeping the program top of mind is really part of the, the benefits for this for both the merchants and uh, consumers. And then creating contests, games, all kinds of things that will help also bring more profit to your chamber. Now, who am I? What am I all about? Let me tell you, I, I have been an entrepreneur all of my life since I was age 10. I actually sold greeting cards door to door and uh, did very well. In fact, I uh, won an award, uh, a regional award for being someone who could sell and I outsell uh, kids that were 14 and 15 at 10 years old. I bought a newspaper in 1998. We built it from one newspaper to 14. Uh, and that is when I first started working with the buy local programs. And uh, I sold the newspapers in 2014 uh, with 14 newspapers. So, um, and I built a basic buy local program that failed. And um, then uh, several of us put together another one that was successful. In fact, they, they know it's gone on and has a life of its own. Uh, but for the communities, this is a, a community one that is a buy local program. And then, uh, and I've helped several chambers, newspapers, cities, and others with buy local programs. In fact, there's uh, several cities that they tried to get 
the uh, chamber of commerce in their area to go with it. And the chamber said, no, nah, there's no money in it. Well, those chambers are now out of business uh, or have consolidated with a, a nearby city and they just don't have an identity that this uh, city was really looking to build. Uh, and uh, there's two of them that I've done that with. And it's, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to see that. Um, I've worked with newspapers on this project and radio stations. Uh, and even in one area, we did a, um, a cable company that uh, came in and helped do it. And then they partnered with the city. So uh, a couple other things about me. I, I've been offering a course like this at no cost for a couple of years. I'm going to be giving that to you as well. I'm updating it right now. And so I will be uh, telling you more about that uh, in the next week. Um, and one of the best things about this is it breaks everything out into being able to do uh, things over time. So it becomes a strong program and it gets stronger with time rather than falling away. The other thing is I will introduce you to some programs that may make sense for you. If they do, you can sign up. Now, in most cases, we're going to be talking about uh, programs that, uh, well, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're, they are programs that can get you going uh, I have programs, but I'm not going to be talking about my business as much as I want uh, you to just simply be a stronger chamber. And that's the bottom line. Um, and so the first thing we're going to talk about is moving your membership investment to a monthly and to make it so that you make more money and have greater cash flow. And I want to welcome Scott Johnson. I've asked him to come and uh, present this side of things because he has a program but you can use this program with anybody, uh, whether it be a bank or a credit union. So I'm going to have uh, Scott Johnson go ahead and share, and he's going to be presenting. Well, thanks, Boyd. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so it's really cool what you're doing for, for the communities. I, I think it's absolutely amazing. Anytime we can keep money that, uh, that is produced here locally, it's, it's huge. It's, it's massive. And if people really understood how much money leaves their community, just because they don't know how to capture it, it's, it's mind blowing how, how big a number that is. So I, uh, my name's Scott and uh, I've been in business for, oh God, I, I started my first business when I was 21. Uh, one of the businesses has been running for 20 something odd years, <laughs> almost 30 years. Uh, and uh, love love business, love what it can do for for uh, people. Uh, I would consider myself an entrepreneuraholic because <laughs> I actually own multiple businesses now. And uh, Woji is one of these businesses that I actually I absolutely um, fell in love with designing and developing because of how much it benefits communities. So the issue right now that that a lot of businesses are stressed out right now. And, and there's two main reasons why that's taking place. The first one, everybody knows COVID shut down uh, a lot of companies. I, I feel bad because there was a, a little Mexican store, uh, Mexican restaurant that my wife and I used to eat at and it, it had to close the stores. And, and I just, I, I love I felt so sorry for the owners that they had to go through that. The other thing that's going to happen in the near future is the up and coming tax increase with the with what's happened politically. So businesses are going to get hit in that area. So the 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 issue really is this right now, businesses are going through feast or famine. Uh, I one of the companies I own is a sign company. We're in a feast mode. We cannot keep up with with the amount of orders that are coming in. And whenever the pendulum swings drastically like that, spending changes for people. It's a, psycholo it's a psychological thing. If it's a feast, most of the time they think, I have so much work, why do I need the chamber? Because they usually join the chamber to be able to help their business grow. And most of them look at it, at it as just profit. Can the chamber create profit for me or not? The other is famine. With famine, it's I can't afford it, 
because it's a lump sum and I have other bills to take care of. So, so it's, they're in that drastic swing right now. And because of it, it makes it a lot more difficult. So to alleviate this feast or famine concern, there's, there's three things that, that work, not just with the chamber, it works in small businesses, but for the chambers, I, it will help them be able to, to, to uh, keep the money, keep all the money within the, the chamber, but also help the chamber be able to grow and expand at a much faster rate. The first thing is you got to do monthly installments. Everybody seems to be scared of monthly installments, and it's actually easy. With everything that we have today, the tools that are at our fingertips, it is very, very easy to do monthly installments with people. The second is auto withdrawal. You have to do auto withdrawal. You don't want to bill every month, and you don't need to anymore. If your contract is set up for it, you're able to do it. The last thing that, that really this affects is the convenience of price points. Now, a lot of chambers have multiple price points that they can bring their members in. And the more, the more they, they focus on monthly installments, the greater the, the uh, price point can be for the, that chamber member. So you really wanna look at those, those aspects when you're, when, you're, when you're thinking about how am I going to keep, keep those small businesses within the chamber and how can I expand the chamber itself? So if you do it on monthly payments, you can set it up to where the payments are out of sight, out of mind. So it's not a concern that hits them you know, once a year where all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna you know, cover this cost? So there's two ways that you can do it. And I gotta move your mugs, sorry. <laughs> I was staring at you guys. So um, there's two ways to do it. And that is the, the first option is you set it up with your, your local bank or credit union. Most, most of them are set up in some way for you to be able to do automatic withdrawal and be able to set this up to where you can do monthly payments. Most of them do it through credit cards. That, that to me is an issue because the interest ends up leaving the state and a percentage with merchant services ends up leaving the state. Every transaction, there's a central bank that takes a, a, a portion of it. Um, but banks are set up and, and to me, there's still a benefit as long as you're banking local. So the goal is keep the money local. Option two is Woji. Now Woji is set up uh, very unique and it has uh, specific benefits. One is there's an actual paper trail. So you're able to track the transactions that are happening. Uh, it, it actually makes it safer than credit cards. The second thing is, is there's no transaction fees. It's bank to bank. So, so with the being bank to bank, there's, you know, you, you're not paying a, a middleman to collect the money. This, the third thing is there's no expiration date on bank accounts. If you have someone set up on monthly payments or even annually where it's automatic from a credit card, credit cards usually expire within two to like three years. Well, that means that if it expires, you have to go back out and get that, get their information again in order to do it, you know, to run the process. So uh, having it bank to bank, there, there's no expiration date on a bank. So, and, and a credit card, you can cancel a credit card like that. And then all of a sudden you're back to trying to get a hold of them. You're trying to start that whole process again. Where bank to bank, it's not like that. One other benefit is, is when it's bank to bank, they're calling you to cancel it. They're not calling a credit card company or a third party to, to cancel the subscription. They're, they're contacting you to, to do that. And, and by contacting you, you're able to, to work with them to figure out a solution instead of just canceling them. So hugely, hugely benefit beneficial to do this process. And that is one of the big benefits that I have seen with a lot of our uh, chambers who are utilizing this prospect because they're what they're doing is somebody says, Hey, I just can't afford it. You can drop them down to a, a lower level and still keep them as a chamber member. And uh, it works out really well because then it, you know, instead of paying $60 a month, it's $30 a month or whatever it might be. And so 
it's really yeah. strong, really yeah. strong for the chambers where, you know, if they're going out of business, yeah, that's one thing. But if they're, they're just simply needing to cut down, maybe they bought one of the high packages that's $150 a month, then, but they need to drop down to $60 a month. Yeah, they're, they're, they have to call you to, yep. to do it instead of just canceling it and they're gone. That's right. So, so here's what's really cool. So the, the learning curve for Woji is really simple. This is the process that we put chambers through. This is the process we put small businesses through. First off, we have, uh, we have our 1.5 software that is a PC-based software. We're, we're, right now, we're in development for our cloud-based software which is supposed to be done in the next uh, few months. But for right now, getting you started in the process and understanding it, you can, you can use the 1.5 software. We uh, mail you your key along with, with all the information that you need. After that, you download the ACH terms, the automatic withdrawal terms. So uh, it, you don't have to do any guesswork dealing with, okay, what do I need in the contract that I give people to have them sign? So you're, you're given the terms to be able to do that. Next thing is, is you can choose whether you just want video training on the installation and actual training of, uh, of the software and process, or you can have one-on-one -on -one Zoom training. And with the one-on-one -on -one Zoom training, it is a complete walkthrough from start to finish. You, you may download the software, but uh, they're gonna walk you through the actual installation and setup and training of the software as well so that you know exactly what you're doing. Which we love doing because when we do that, there's, there's no questions. It's just, it's just one and done. Uh, then all you do after that is you print mobile deposit payments. It's really, really simple. I, like I said, I've been doing this for 20, 22 years. And, uh, and it is absolutely successful. It changed my business completely to where I am at uh, with the sign company. I'm at 100% collection. And uh, of course, with financing as well, I'm probably at around 90% uh, of all the interest that I've collected. I, I, I just, I don't deal with the regular issues. And this process is the process that helped me do it. So, so all of it needs to be set up on that, uh, on, on that auto withdrawal, minimum monthly payments, establish that, that uh, system within the chambers and it makes it so that you can, you can collect easier. You can, you, you're in more communication with your, with your chamber members because of it. Uh, you're, you, can, you can work with them more. The, the other thing too is, and I'm gonna do this briefly because it's, because everything's mainly about you as the chamber, but I want to let you know what Woji can do for chamber members. There are three areas that of, of huge amount of profit that leaves your community. And it's caused because of three problems within small businesses that actually resolve each other when they're brought back into the, the small business. The first one is collections. We have a process that's called collection prevention or pre-collections which keeps their customers out of the 60 to 90 day collection window. It's within the contracts, it's within the software, it's within the system. It's within their, the psychology of collections to where the business can handle uh, all the, keeping people from going into that collections. The second thing is, just like with the chamber, it's bank to bank auto withdrawal. You have to do bank to bank auto withdrawal or else it creates, Havoc, and when it's bank to bank, there's no merchant fees. So if you look at it with collections, anything that's sent to collection you usually lose about forty percent if it's collectible. Bank to bank, merchant fees. If you're going through credit card, you're going to be dealing with merchant fees, and you lose that money. The last one is true in-house financing. It is setting up the small businesses to be able to finance their own customers. The amount of the, the millions of dollars that leaves the community is absolutely amazing. If, if small businesses knew that they could capture all that money, they would never use credit cards again. They'd never have a customer pull out a credit card. With my, with, with my sign company, if anybody pulls out a credit card, we'll, we finance them. <laughs> we try and figure out how to finance them at a lower interest rate. 
these three things actually cancel each other's problems out. It's absolutely amazing how they do it. Woji is set up to be able to handle that. The, the goal behind it is to, to create a paradigm shift. Now, uh, I want to show you this paradigm shift just so that you can get an idea. And this also deals with the chamber. Chambers have multiple uh, tiers of membership. And some people look at the larger membership and say, there's no way that I can afford it. So I'm going to ask a question. How many people in the world can afford this car? It's a Bugatti. It's worth about $4 million. It can go up to about $4.5 million for this car. Any guesses as to how many people in the world can afford this car? Half a percent. Half a percent. There are millions upon millions of people that can afford this car. It all depends on the financing. If I was to say, I have this car, you can rent it or you can, you can purchase it monthly payments for 250 bucks a month for the rest of your life. Could you do it? Sure. Do you see what I mean? I do. It's all depending on how you set it up. So what we do is we teach small businesses how to do this process and be able to finance their product or service, no matter if they're service-based, product-based, uh, high, high uh, profit margin, low profit margin, there's a way, a unique way for them to be able to finance their customers and keep all the interest themselves, keep it all local. That's the goal. So it all depends on that, on how it's financed. Woji's objective, our main objective and our main goal is to keep money local. It's all about keeping all the profit within the community. And, and the main three areas that we see money leaving is collections, merchant fees, and credit card interest. And if you could see the millions of dollars that leave every month from a community in credit card, oh my gosh, you would die. And that's money that just continues to suck out every time someone purchases. And all of that money can stay local. With just a few companies that we have started with, we know that in, U in the state of Utah, we are, are, have kept over a million dollars a year in the state from just the, the small number of, uh, of companies that are doing this process. And, uh, and like I said, it fits right so, along with what- uh, I, have, I have a quick question for you, Scott. Doing. What was uh, that? So one of the things I had to do here coming up is I had to do a presentation for my city. Mm -hmm. Hardest one I've ever had to do because I, you know, everything's all messed up. I have no idea what the future is going to be, you know, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to guess. We didn't have a, a planning, you know, typically we have a planning retreat with the board. We mm -hmm. planned the whole year. Well, that didn't happen. And, and oh. so now I had to sit down last week and just kind of create a plan. And the worst part about it, now my chair has to go in and deliver that presentation. I'll, I'll explain what happened last year. It's what we're going to break it up. And, and what I've got to do is I'm trying to put unique stuff in there because it's going to be different. I know it is. I, I, and I don't know what's going to work. You know, mm -hmm. Zoom kind of works, but it kind of doesn't, right? And we all yeah. know a lot of people have used it. Um, and so what you, how would you describe, let's say if I, I can get, you know, something around this with my board and I want to put it in there. How would you describe that on, you know, telling somebody else what the chamber is doing? What do you call it? Is, is it a, a, a special financing program for businesses or what do you call it? Um, what we call it is it's a way for businesses to keep the three major areas where money is, is sucked from them. Okay. Okay. No, in the I case took notes of, on that part. So in, I got that. In the so, case of the, uh, the chamber, it's going to help more of the people in the community belong to the chamber because they can go in at a $30 or $60 a month price tag instead of $600 or $300 mm -hmm. uh, all at once. Like I said, Woji is all about, um, about helping communities. So I'm, I'm working directly with Boyd on how to set up Woji once we have the 2.0 software so that um, chambers end up being benefited according to the chamber members that are involved with Woji. Okay. I think it's a great plan. I, I, I like it. it. What's the funnel for bringing them in? Um, so how, how, how can I talk to my members 
So, so they understand what I'm explaining to them. That, what academy, you want to that academy that we have, it has a chamber section and then it has a business section. And the business section gives you a lot of the things that, so you can talk to them about what he just uh, mentioned to you. What's the sizzle that makes them sign up for that academy so we can get them on that program? Okay, well, no, the academy is really for the chamber. Uh, okay. we, we do have it for... Uh, we we have a direct one for the business. They don't need to know about the chamber side of it. We give the chamber one so they can see both the business and the chamber side. Okay. okay. And, the, sizzle? the sizzle is they're going to save uh, money. They're not going to have to pay for the uh, processing fees. That's the first thing. Then collections. They don't have to send things off to collections any longer. They work a deal with them with the clients mm -hmm. so that if, hey, they're having a hard time, we can change things around so that it works for them. Mm -hmm. Not, But if you send it off to collections, you you lose 40%, you lose 60%, whatever it yeah. is. And they cancel. Yeah, they they will never use you again because collections companies- Yeah, you gotta go to court them. with them. I used, I used to have to do that as part of my job. Yeah. Yeah. You, this works out really well. Really there's slow. another sizzle. There's another sizzle in the back office, and that is that there's a calculator that we created so that you can actually see how much money okay. is being yes. being. So to get people to sign it. up, you know, to get this program, you know, my members. I want. I would like to get all my members on. Oh, it'd I be fun. See, it's beneficial. Um, and, you know, I can see that it's it'd be really good because it gives you another income stream, really, if you do it right. Right. Oh, yeah. Passive, passive income stream. Yeah. And it's, it's always there. And your customers will be happier because like your example that you said earlier was a perfect one. Well, we figure out a way to finance it. That's going. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's so, you know, I mean, it, it's like, like when I hit your brain, you're going. That's the Basically paradigm shift. Yeah. You know? That's the paradigm shift. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, uh, Boyd, I want yeah, to see me, what else you got going on. Let me go tell you about the other three programs that I have. Uh, and so uh, as you and I, uh, Bill, have uh, talked about buy local programs before, but uh, that's what we're going to go into. And, you know, should you build a buy local program? And how is that going to be relevant and engaging for years to come, which is a big problem with a lot of them. They start off big, but people forget about them. Well, there's a way of going around that. So the, the second thing that I'm talking about of the four is to a buy local program that can last for years and years. And it's all about uh, structuring it right. So uh, I, I ask a lot of questions here, you know, can a buy local program really keep your members from leaving? Well, why should you be the one to build a buy local program? Uh, it's make it's a no brainer for chambers to do this. As I mentioned earlier, when I first started, I have worked with chambers, with newspapers, with radio stations, and with communities, uh, the economic development people in a community, to create buy local programs. And it, uh, once it's started and they do it the right way, they have great success with it. And we've seen that in many different areas. Um, so, and that's what this is all going to be about. Um, and it is about making a difference in the community and it gets both the current members and the past uh, members and even the uh, new uh, people to become members uh, because of this. You know, I helped them start the uh, buy local program that started in uh, the ninth and ninth area of Salt Lake right. City. And then we ex it expanded to uh, by local Utah. Well, now it's this. And, uh, you know, great. In Utah is a great thing. But we need as a community to keep the uh, people here in our community buying from us. You know, don't go to Murray. Don't go to West Jordan. It's Draper you need to be spending your money in. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about. Uh, so, uh, and why I am passionate about this and why it's working really well in other communities as well. It is going from a state thing or even a county thing to the community and keeping the community strong. So uh, 
So and now I have a few free gifts that I'm going to be giving away uh, with this. You will get a copy of this uh, so, so you can watch it over and over and you can okay. show it to others. And it'll be everything from the very beginning. So including your conversation with Scott and anything else w- that we do from here. Of course, there's going to be a resource guide and some notes from here uh, and all that kind of stuff. Plus, I'm going to spend an hour of my time at some point uh, to, to work with you, the chamber, as well as Scott's going to be having master class for the chamber members so that they can learn how to do this. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the three levels of a bi-local program that I put together. So uh, the first one is you start with a bi-local and uh, I'll, we'll ex- go into it in depth as to what that is. <laughs> the second thing we do is then after we got that going and it's at its peak, then you start a new program that it's not a new program and it's, it's an expansion of the bi-local program called Think Local Program. And I'll tell you what that is in a few minutes as well. And then once it gets going, you then again build on it and it's called the Build Local Community Program. And so it's all about building on each other and we'll discuss how that works in a minute. So uh, the big thing is uh, this is a program about keeping you from losing momentum with a bi-local program. That's one of the problems that uh, the bi-local went to uh, bi-local Utah. Now it's the in Utah because it was losing momentum. And it lost momentum, and then they started resurrecting it, and they they keep doing different things. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so the first thing is, I have found that getting the government involved is something you want to get to, uh, in front of right from the beginning. So with you going in to meet with the mayor and the council, perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now you you want to get their input, and you and I have talked about this before. Really, the chamber should be the economic development engine behind the city. But most chambers and most cities don't do that. They just simply don't know how to do that. And so it's, but here is a way of doing that. And so there's a lot of different things in it. And you do have to probably start with working with them until it gets to the point where the city looks at it and says, well, the chamber's doing most of this. What are we paying you guys for? Okay, you're going to the conventions. Good, we've got a place for you, okay? All right, so here's, you know, you you get their input, you uh, show them the build community program all the way through, uh, and really it's getting them all into this, find out any extra ideas they have, but it's a branding thing. So the other thing that I see that's really good about it, it, you know, long-term, let's say 10 years down the road, you know, um, it's going to create a different flavor for every community. Right. Which is good because we have these, these cut and paste businesses now, you know, everybody gets this type of business. I mean, I've been to those conventions um, in Las Vegas where they want to put one of these stores in every one of the little towns. Well, that's great, except for it doesn't make you unique. It makes, it doesn't give anybody a reason to feel like there's any loyalty as opposed to, you know, if it's Don Ballard's iceberg, right? You know, mm-hmm. the other iceberg. You know, it's they're still both icebergs, but that's Don Ballard's iceberg. Correct. You know, and yep. and I think that's the part that if you look at, you know, like Heber City does a great job of that. That's one right. of the cities that really do a good job of that. They have a unique position, but I think that's one of the keys that if if, if a program like, right like this could really create for a city. Yes. The, the, other thing, the other thing that I look at is, is, again, going back to just the monthly payments, you've got, you've got large corporations that come in and they have the money for the larger memberships. And then you have smaller companies that are mom and pop shops that are local and sometimes they can't afford it. But yet when, you're, when you have them on monthly payments, it gives them the opportunity to be, be able to, to compete. Well, and it's, it, let me tell you, the one of the things I like about it, even more than that, is it's a lot of work to run invoices for a year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then the other problem is, and, and you kind of uh, hit on it earlier, you don't know if they're gone. And so you're wasting postage too. Oh, yeah. You send the letters out, you know, and what you get back is the forwarding is expired. Yeah, after three months. 
and well, what does that mean? Doesn't mean anything to you. No, nope. you don't know where they went. <laughs> you know they're gone. You know, yeah. so I can see. You know, there's th there's three problems that that addresses immediately. Yeah. Well, here's how to start a buy local program from what we've done. Now, when I ran the community newspapers, we started this program ourselves after we uh, saw the problems that uh, were by local Utah when they took it over. And so we started it in uh, just a couple of the communities where we built a web, a Facebook page and a web page that was all about the consumers being able to figure out how to buy from our local, our local advertisers in that case. But then we started implementing it with the chambers and we offered it, hey, if they're a chamber member, we're gonna update their uh, listing and we'll do all kinds of things. And it was all about um, promoting the businesses of that community many different ways. Uh, in the newspaper, on social media, and uh, signage right. through the chamber, everything we could find. Okay. Now, with that uh, local web page, we had it so that they could find the local businesses. And we would also do spotlights. And I'll tell you about spotlights yeah. in a minute. And I know you know what a spotlight is. Yeah. But we did it a little differently than some of the others when we started putting this together. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, we had it so that there were offers from the local merchants to anyone. Now they didn't have to be discounts. That's why I use the word offers. They can be all kinds of different things. I'm not a big fan of discounting every time you uh, send something out. Um, I know that the uh, mail service people, you know, with uh, value pages and all of the others, that's what their big thing is. It's all about discounting. I don't like to discount. I, I want to see offers and I'll, I can tell you about that sometime. But then also having a local fair for consumers to come and meet businesses was a really good one. We helped start the one that uh, Riverton has. I'm helping South Jordan Chamber do one now that's in conjunction with their, uh, their country fest that they're mm -hmm. doing in September. These are things that really make a difference for the businesses if the businesses understand it. The first year we did it with Riverton, we only had 15 businesses and we had the mayor and a couple of council people and the, uh, the rec center all, or the rec uh, department, they all uh, were participants in a couple of restaurants. That worked out fine. We only had you know, 250, 300 people that came through. In 2009, we had close to 50,000 people who came through because we had it's expanded to being a car show and a, and a tractor show right, and right. all kinds of things. Um, because the city has taken it over away from the chamber and, it, but it was a chamber and, and um, yeah, that's happened to me locally yeah. here with all the things that I used to do is the city's taken them all over. All so the money making. Exactly. So what needs to, one of the big things is with this is make sure that it's branded the right way. And then <laughs> I helped a, a, um, a chamber uh, in back east in um, Ohio, they had to send a cease and desist order to the city. And when they came, got brought up before the city council, the city council said, what is this? You're, these guys started it. What are you trying to take it over for? Well, we want to do it differently. And they're going, it's their program. And the cease and desist held. And, uh, wow. it, and so it's one of those things you have to do sometimes even if you are partners, you've got to have everything in place. And that is one of the things that we recommend. Make sure that it is, uh, in fact, one of the things we've been doing is we work with a, a guy who helps you put together it as an entity of itself owned by the chamber. And then if somebody tries to take it away from the chamber, the chamber owns it. They can't be taken away because they own it. So anyway, we, uh, and then we start talking to prospective partners and, and prospective partners, let's talk about that for a minute. They can be the, the city, but they can also be the newspaper. They can be the radio station. They can be the local cable carrier. It can be all kinds of different people that uh, you use. It can even be uh, other uh, internet sites that are localized. Mm -hmm. The problem with some of these uh, internet sites that claim to be local, they're not. And they, they take the money elsewhere once they start making money on it. 
So you got to be careful with that. Here is one of the ones that, uh, you know, that buy local first Utah, they build a website that looked kind of like this. There were some cool things that were with this. And this is one of the things that I love about it is, you know, find a business. You could look up the businesses by their name, by mm -hmm. their, the owner, by their category, by their location. Okay. So if you say Harmon's, it's going to come up with both Harmons that are in Draper. Draper. And then you can say, oh, I just want the one by Bangator. Well, then it knows where it is. That's the key thing, you know, or maybe you say grocery store and then suddenly you've got Smith's <clears throat> and others that are coming up as well. Um, the big one that we liked, and this is one of the things that Buy Local First has gone away from with the in Utah, is you have to now pay to get in no matter what where we had it so that you could register your business and every business could be in there. And then if you were a chamber member, or in our case with the journals, if you were a chamber member, you got a bolded listing. And if you were a higher member of the chamber, you got even that. more information in there. And it really helped. We had people who were joining the chamber just so they could get, to get uh, that. that. Okay, so the first thing you do is you start with those first three things that I mentioned, which mm -hmm. is, you know, creating the, the two websites. Well, one's really a Facebook page. One's a part of your website, part of your website, not the uh, a standalone generally, because you want it to be branded to the chamber. Okay, and then, of course, the uh, third one was create the local fair. With that, you start with those three things. Then have someone that can go to the member businesses to record a spotlight. Spotlights was one of the things that we started doing with our newspaper. And then uh, both Southwest Valley and uh, South Jordan started doing it after I sold the newspapers. But we would go and we would do, and I'm going to show you an example of uh, one of them in a minute. But one of the things we did was we went and we did a, an interview with the owner in his store or location and with some of his people. And we did some fun things that went with it. And uh, we had a door sticker and clean thing that we would put on the business so that people would recognize that uh, they had been spotlighted. And it drove people to the site, which what is the website all about? It's about one, it's showing off those uh, spotlights, but it's also marketing for all of the businesses that have put ads in there and they don't have to be expensive ads but they are right. ads and then the third thing is it gets them to the directory easily by clicking one button they're over to the directory to find more about anything but one of the other things that we love is we all, we started doing fun things so one of the places that i worked with is back in uh I think it's the one in Ohio. And what they did was they bought everything had to have lime green things. That was part of their whole culture, but that was part of their, uh, the, the logo that the city had. So they got, bought hats, they bought glasses, they bought bandanas. And so when they, uh, let me get here and I'll show you it. So this is one of the things that they did. Now, this is actually the Think Local one. They had a Buy Local one, too. But you notice the picture. It's all about Think Local. It's really good. green glasses. It's the green hat, the green Buy Local, and everything is green. And it really drives. And then what they did was they, they partnered with the newspaper, and they had it both a, as a, 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 a picture. And this was their in the – they took their uh, – the, uh, the newspaper – the thing that they had worked out with them, this was what they put in it, as well as then they had the other half of the page was, so this was a quarter page ad, then they had a quarter page that talked about the other businesses and things, and it drove people to this site so that they could go and see more about it. And they could see the video that went with this um, BMO Harris Bank. And it hmm. was fun. It, and before long, Everybody at town days was wearing the green hats, or it seemed like it. Everybody loved to wear their green glasses. And of course, there wasn't any glass in them. But, you know, it was a fun thing. And it was identified by people. And that's why something along this lines of a local business to consumer event really helps because 
you can it's run by the chamber only now with the chamber we allowed any riverton business to be in it so now here's some of the things with the business spotlight video that we did we promoted it locally we had multiple spotlights on the web page um, and uh, with the newest one at the top we uh, put a menu on it so that people could find every one of them and uh, we push people to the buy local directory right from that and it really works now we're going to talk about the buy local directory here in a few minutes more but uh, so the think local program so that that was really the first one this the think local was more to brand it with more of the fun things that mm -hmm. was the hats the bandanas get creative sure. you can pick and choose what you want to do then we Thanks, added uh, some more social media things with facebook instagram some youtube videos that were we did a challenge, and I'm going to show you a, a, one of those in a minute, uh, a challenge with our newspapers, and it did it's fabulous. And, and, and as I mentioned, open directory for all. And with the digital media, it is all about bringing customers back more often uh, by using promotions, offers, and events. Now, here's one of the, the, the best signs I've ever seen, and I love to use this in this slideshow. You know, you know what, what it is, don't you? Oh, my gosh. That's so great. <laughs> it is. It is. So this is all about educating the public and the city. Why buying local is so important. So we did a contest with the newspapers. And I am now having a lot of our chambers and cities do this. Same type of thing elsewhere. But I wanted to use the ones that we did. So we did a uh, where do you read your journal? And so here we had, and, you know, everybody, uh, you know, all entries win a prize. We sent them a, a gift certificate to somewhere or, um, you know, something. And then we had a big winner. Well, you know what? We had people from all over. These were the ads that we ran. And we had, if you read around the edge of that, you can see all the different places that we had people uh, where they did it. And now uh -huh. most of them are in the home in that one. But here's where we had elsewhere. We had wow. people reading it in Heathrow Airport. It was the pilot sitting in the cockpit with, and you could see, <laughs> welcome to Heathrow Airport right out oh the window. Oh my gosh, that's We that's had tremendous. people on the beach in Japan. We <laughs> had people, of course, in, in you know all kinds of tree houses and up on top of the roof of their house. Uh, it was all over the place. But the thing that we saw was, we had people doing it at, we had some that were doing it at the Marv Jensen Fitness Center. We had people that were doing it at their hair salon, at restaurants. And uh, I went into uh, Sausalito's when he was down in West Jordan. And he says, I go through a lot of newspapers here. I don't understand why until I started walking around and people are there holding it up with other people taking pictures of it. What is this? <laughs> this was for a newspaper. But can you imagine, and I, I was trying to get this uh, South Jordan Chamber to do this back in oh, March or April of last year, just after the COVID started. But, you know, this can, there's all kinds of cool things like this that you can do. Where do you love to go in Draper? Where do you love to eat? Where do you love to get your hair done, your nails done? It doesn't matter anything. Uh, and you can change it from month to month as to what you do and you can give it away, give a prize away. And I have prizes that we can give away, uh, great prizes. Like uh, you want a trip, uh, now of course it's sending them outside of Draper, but you know, you want a trip to, uh, uh, to Tahoe? You want a trip to Las Vegas? You want a trip to, uh, to um, Santa Fe, New Mexico? Mm -hmm. We'll give you a three night uh, stay there in a, in a resort in those places. And I'll be glad to donate those. Okay. So those were, that was one of the contests that we read. Now here's the build local side of it. Well, so let me, let me tell you something yeah. I see too, Boyd, which has got me kind of excited is that one of the things we're missing now is fun. Oh yeah. Fun is gone. Is. This and is that's what all, all those fun. things were about. This is all fun. Yeah, it is. Now, here's the things we've got to help the, the community understand. And in, in some cases, we have to tell the, the city council and the city <laughs> this as well, because they don't understand this. 
Look at this. The police and fire are paid by taxes received from sales in their community. Do you know what? If they're not buying something in your community, where's that sales tax going? It's paying the salary for the uh, mayor of Sandy. So now uh, it, the advantages, and it goes along with that sign that I showed you, it, it's all about local jobs. It's the, you know helping your neighbor's businesses. So here's all the things that they need to be telling people to do. And here is the consequences if they don't. Do you want higher taxes? In order to work, you have to leave. And, and you know, the second to last one, adds local flavor with local merchants. That's about, you're going to lose the love of your town. Now, I have all kinds of ideas. I've, I've got two and a half pages more of ideas that go along with this that can be plugged in on any one of these three things. They, they, mean, they have uh, coloring contests for kids. We have all kinds of things that can be done. I'm, it's all going to be part of this uh, online. I've got an online program where you can go and learn more about it. I'm updating it right now. You'll be able to go in and get it. Anyway, now the number three, business training. This is another one that cities say that they want this. And then what do they do? They, they point people to some other areas. The chamber tries to do this and it's circumvented by the state and county and sometimes federal government. Yeah. So let me give you an idea. Uh, be the place to go for training a business to be a business. What better place? Why don't yeah. we have a, a program for uh, teaching people how to get into business and all the things that they need to get into business? Mm -hmm. Why aren't we helping them go from, and it's the business success conference that I did last year is an example of what can happen. Okay, now many partner with the community colleges and the universities. Here, there's a problem with them and the SBDC and the right. store because all <laughs> they want to do is they don't want, want recordings of it out there. They want to have it live so they can charge for it every single time. And that's, that's okay if that's where you're going. But I think that chambers should have a great training program that's low cost or no cost. And it should have everything from learning the, there's 18 steps you need to do before you start a business. Most, uh, in fact, Salt Lake Community College only teaches seven. 18 steps and they're the basics to get a good business started. It's so you understand the things you don't know that you don't know, right? Oh yeah. And, and so that's what this is about. And then you've got, okay, it, should it be video courses or weekly and monthly trainings? You know, I, I'm sorry. I love getting together with people. But, and Salt Lake Community College keeps saying, oh, come use our facility. We have video uh, recording things. It's never as good. Uh, you know, when you're standing across right. the room and the video uh, is clear across the room and the microphone's clear across the room. Yeah. Come on, guys, get it close up, get it there. And yes, monthly and uh, weekly and monthly trainings are great, but record them professionally or some way that's easy to then be put onto the chamber's website. Teach what they want, but put in things that they need. Now, what I mean by this is when I ran Entrepreneur Launchpad, mm -hmm. we had people who said, well, I'm not interested in accounting. I'm not interested in uh, anything to do with the attorneys and setting up my business and any, and they would go on and on and on. Well, here is a survey that I did last year after the Business Success Conference. And <laughs> it, it gives the top 10 things that people wanted and in order of, now, I actually had 20 items and I've combined a few of them into this. And so these are the, the 10 top things that people want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, marketing, number one. Number two is sales, learning to sell better. Getting startup programs so they can actually get things going. Okay, leadership, business yeah. ideas. I could not believe how many people we had a, a startup conference. I had 80, well, it wasn't quite 85. It was probably 70 people that came to just one class that I had about 
finding a business that you might like to get involved with. And we talked about, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of different things. And we, I think I had 65 different business ideas and people walked away going, oh my gosh, I have so many ideas now. I got to pare them down. Okay. Financing their business was number six. It wasn't number one. It wasn't number two. Putting together an advisory A or an A team, as I call it, that, you know, finding, you know, coaches or somebody who can help you, which actually they should be using the chamber for, as that's something they, they have all these resources there. Franchising. Now, what is number nine? Bookkeeping. And was selling the business and retirement planning. This is the order that they were interested in it. And when I talk to the chambers, they all say, oh, everybody needs bookkeeping. Everybody needs retirement planning. Everybody needs, well, wait a minute. That's not what people want. Financing is still number six. And, you know, SBDC is always talking about financing in one way or another. Great. But it's still number six. Yeah. There's something else, Boyd, that I wanted to say dealing with this. The chamber can actually be a stepping stool for new businesses. It doesn't have to be best for new businesses. When Boyd was talking about ELP or Entrepreneurial Launchpad, I was going there for education, but I had to travel to Provo. I'm on the other side of the lake. There's nothing like that in our chamber. Mm-hmm. So right. it's something that if people knew was within the, the chamber and could go to, to learn this stuff locally, I think that's that's huge. We need to make sure people know that they can find the help that they need locally, but they don't have to go somewhere. They can do it right from their home. The last thing is more about a business directory because it can actually build, and I'm going to tell you a story about that as we go along. So I mentioned it in uh, the Build Local program, but it, it invites all businesses to give you their information to put in this directory. Those that are in the chamber members, they get an enhanced listing. We talked about that too. Uh, many pay- chambers get pay, they get paid interns to call each of the businesses that are not members and then give them a spiff for getting them to get an appointment with the owner for you. Hmm. Okay. This, and I'll tell you, this is the big thing. In Hawaii, on Maui, there is a, a, a chamber and a, uh, a marketing company that's doing this. And they have doubled the members of the chamber over the last year. Wow. Now that is during COVID yeah. when all of the people were discouraged from coming to Hawaii. They got double their members and the marketing company is doing almost three times as much because they have done some things together and it's worked out really well. Uh, And they get, you know, they also get ads from both members and non-members for their buy local webpage. They're getting all kinds of things. This has done some big things during COVID. Part of it is it's all about helping chambers get a bigger bottom line. And I I can give you more information about that uh, program. And the key is with a good uh, buy local and all this whole program is it's all there's four corners and the four corners we just talked about those were the four things and then the in between is the buy local think local uh build local and then it's also the uh, the getting it so that more people can be involved and uh because of training and uh the program that uh woji has are both things that help build that middle out more. Down in Florida, I have worked with a chamber down there. They were struggling along about five years ago, I think it was. And the first thing that I told them what they needed to do was, you know, they're in a resort community just outside of Tampa, okay? They're on the coast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on the... um, Caribbean coast. Mm -hmm. They had lots of businesses, but they don't have any, almost any industrial. It's all in manufacturing or anything like that. It's all uh, uh, for attracting businesses or attracting people in to stay there. 
the chamber is like Park City Chamber, where they kind right. of, they have the money from the city to do the uh, local marketing. But this uh, chamber now has 70% of all businesses in the chamber, where they were at, uh, and they were just going under 10 when mm -hmm. I lost, when I talked to them and said, change to just doing it monthly. They wow. increased their, uh, their revenue by 12% on just the current members at that time, because, you know, $60 versus $600, you save 12% by paying $600, right? But now <laughs> they're getting people who are saying, I can afford $30. I can afford $30 because now I'm in the directory and I get a, a bigger listing. And they do. They put together a directory page. They have uh, people. When I go there, I look up their directory. I love to see their directory because it tells me all the, the cool restaurants that I haven't seen before. It tells me about the events that are going on in the city and when they're going to happen because they have an event page there. And, you know, of course, they are a that kind of a community where they have a lot of those events that draw people from outside. But they bring people to there. Their buy local program is to, uh, to the uh, people behind the scenes. And it's not as strong as what I'm telling you because they mm -hmm. don't need that. They're, they're about bring people in from outside, but they do have a buy local program for all the locals. And in that buy local program, it's a hidden page in their chamber area that they can go and get local discounts, local offers, local, like the, I was reading... The other day when I was, uh, uh, one, I get their email newsletter. I used to get their email newsletter. I, I haven't seen it in a few months now, but I was looking at one back in January and, and it was that they were saying, Hey, did you know that this new restaurant's coming to town and for locals, uh, they have these two different dishes that are not for anybody on the menu. So only locals will know to order this. Hmm. And you know what? Uh, they were saying when we uh, introduced this back in November, now in January, they are getting a lot of the locals coming in to buy these two dishes that no one else gets to have. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it is. They're building a, uh, a loyalty among even the locals in a resort community. And there are so many other ways you can make money with this program. I have so, you know, the ideas I have, uh, we have done a lot of things with a, a lot of these companies and it's all about building this up. Anyway, that is the presentation. Well, that's um, excellent, Boyd. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for all your hard welcome. work on this. Okay. Best thing I've seen since I've been with the chamber.